And the title of this message is called The Potter and His Vessels. I was originally going to call it The Potter and the Clay, but after going through it last night, this sounded a little bit more appropriate. Um, basically, the, uh, the idea for this message uh, just kind of came, uh, came to me when I was working in my backyard. I was having to do some digging. It had rained recently. And of course, everybody who's lived around here knows how sticky our mud is and how just, just it's a horrible mess that it makes. Well, I know. I mean, I know the big reason behind uh, the reason why it, it acts the way that it does, because you know, our dirt around here has got a, an incredible amount of clay mixed into it. And I got curious. It's like, it, can you actually extract the clay out of the dirt that we have around here and actually use it? Did a little research on it. it turns out you can do that. So, so I was trying it. So I tried it out, and as I was processing the clay and um, extracting out, that is when the Lord kind of actually starts speaking to me cool. on this message. Um, just from the process of digging it, <coughs> separating the clay out, separating the clay out from just all the rest of the dirt and the grime. Um, the, way he, the way he kind of showed it to me, and this is kind of just the way he usually kind of speaks to me in general, is just I'll get like a, kind of like a flat. It's like a, me, like either standing up here speaking about some particular subject, it just like from like beginning to end, very, very clearly, and almost with the verses um, with it. So, so I decided to, and he kept showing this to me over and over. So I was like, okay, I'm going to write this down, and then one Sunday I'm just going to share it with everybody because apparently he really wants me <laughs> to share this. Um, also, considering the words that had been spoken over my life about doing this particular thing that I'm doing right now and trying to step out into it, I just never knew kind of like where to begin or what to talk about. And the Lord kind of just brought to remember it something that one of my, my art education professor told me, artists start with what they know. Start with what you know, Josh. I know stuff about art. I know stuff about clay here. So and considering that the message, the two are tied together, I figured, okay, as I speak, so when I, give this message. You're going to probably hear me talk, you're going to hear some talk about how a potter uses the clay in the process of making, of making vessels. So you're going to kind of get, no, you're going to get fed through the word, but you're also going to get a little, you're going to be a little educated in pottery a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little basic info. So hope you, so hope you like it. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you would please turn, we're going to start in Psalm 40 verses 1 and 2. All right. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. Okay, now, right there in verse 2, miry bog. If you have King James Version, I believe yours should say miry clay. Um, this was... During the, pro during the process of extracting the clay out of the ground, the first step you have to do is you've got to dig it up out of the ground. And, of course, when you get it, just the raw dirt, it's full of just, it's full of rock, sand, grit, grime. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's a no condition to actually be used for anything. It just set, just set to fill up holes. That's about, that's really about it. Um, so with this, pa so with this pas passage, this is kind of how God meets us. God meets us in our current conditions when we first come to him. He doesn't wait until everything's been cleaned out of us, we're, all, we're perfect, which, you know, we're not gonna be, we're not, per, we're not perfect. So he meets us how we are, okay? This passage also um, echoes Psalm 60, uh, 69 verses one and three, where it talks about, my, I'm paraphrase, it says, my, uh, where David says, my water's up to my neck, I'm sinking into the mire, crying out, waiting on God. So, so with the clay extraction, after you dig it out, you, there's this whole process where you have to get every, when you have to get everything separated out, and it just revolves a lot of just water filtering, more water filtering again, until finally you get something that can actually be used. Now, I was going to let y'all hold this and try it out, but the problem is, it's red clay, it stains, it's messy. Yeah. So, if you want. I would recommend that you leave it in the bag, but you can check it out. This was done, that was taken out of my backyard, and what's it? Say what? 
yes. <laughs> but what's interesting about the, but what's interesting about the clay once you once it's out of the ground, and once you have separated all the junk out of it, the clay that you now the clay that's in that bag is no longer what is in what is no longer what's in the ground. I mean, think about it, the Lord has, says He will say He's going to He wants us to be separate from the world. He doesn't want us to co conform to conform to the world. We're separated from. Him. So just like that clay, it's been separated. Out, it's been separated out of the earth, and it's now something completely different than what than, than the way it was originally found. <clears throat> Excuse me, one second. You're going to have to bear with me because I am trying. I'm getting over. A, I'm getting over a cold, which just hit me very suddenly on Friday. <clears throat> so I apologize. All right. Um, hold your place right there in Psalm 40, um, especially at verse 2. Uh, we're going to go flip over to Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6. And we're going to come back to that um, verse in Psalm in just a second. Okay. All right. Jeremiah 18, verses 1 through 6. Give everybody a second to get there. Jeremiah 18, verses 1 through 6. So basically right now at this point, as I said, the Lord has met us in our current condition. He's now separate. He's now separated us from the rest of the world. So now we're going to talk, to, talk about actually formation of the, formation of the vessel. So uh, start in verse 1. The Lord... <clears throat> The word, came, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. And the, wheel he, and the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel, as it seemed good to, to the potter to do. Then the word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter has done? declares the Lord, behold like clay in the potter's hands, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Amen. Okay. Really love I really love that I really love that passage. Yeah. It's really great. So so what we see here, we see the potter who rep, who represents the father, and of course the clay as God and the clay as God's people. And if you look, I mean if you read through through the rest of the Bible, especially in Romans, this whole illustration of God being a potter, clay, having complete control over it. I mean, it's just throughout the script. It's throughout the scriptures. Um, what's very interesting, though, uh, with the potter's wheel that Jeremiah was looking at, um, the potter's wheel would have been made out of one of two materials. The top of it would either have been made out of wood, or chances are it was probably made out of stone. So if you go back up to Psalm 40, verse 2, where he said, uh, where David said, set my feet upon the rock, after just saying, pull me out of the miry clay, set my feet upon the rock, you come back here to Jeremiah, here he is, take, here's Jeremiah's watching the potter take clay, setting it on maybe probably a, stone, probably a stone wheel, getting ready to form the vessel. And of course, when you're taking clay, when you're taking clay and putting it, on, and putting it on the wheel, you have to put you really got to press down on it and to really get it centered quite uh, quite a bit. Um, the larger, of course, the larger the clay, more basically just the more pressure that you need that you need to apply. Um, and that just right there, that just echoes um, how God will, pre if God is calling you, especially speaking to you, pressing down, pressing down on you, when you answer that, you know, he's going to send, um, He's going to center center your faith on the on the rock that is Christ. It's sent um, sent Amen. to get to get you to basically get you established. Okay. Thank you. All right. Excuse me for a second. When I was um, looking through this, I do find it um, interesting when you go to, if you, I'm just going to, you don't need to turn here, but I'm going to uh, Genesis chapter 2, 
uh, when he's talking about the formation, when he's talking about the formation of Adam and Eve, um, two, the, his very first two vessels that he um, that he formed and uh, he formed in this world, both made both made out of basically the same lump of clay, which when I which I can that can almost be a completely separate message there because when you are making a vessel and if you're going to especially if that vessel especially if you're going to have something attached to it, husband and wife attached um, together, you want to make sure that they are t made made with the same clay. You don't want one that is going that can be fired at a very high temperature. And want it started at a low temperature because then the two pieces will never fully become together. So, so when I was so with that when when we are so just with the formate this is the formation of of the vessel like that. Excuse me. <clears throat> I just thought that was a, I just thought that was a really cool thought when I was when I was looking when I was looking at that. So, but like I said, that could be I could be almost like a that could be a completely different message right there. Um, but yeah, going back, but going back into uh, Jeremiah uh, verse four, um, he says that the clay spoiled in the potter's hands while he was making the vessel. Now I have a question for all of you: um, Whose fault was it that the clay was spoiled? Was it the potter's fault or was it the clay's fault when it spo when the clay spoiled in his hand or marred in his hand, depending on your translation? It's the clay is me. Right. Yeah. Exactly. The clay. It is the clay. Uh, one of the challenges, if you ever if you ever get a chance to work with clay, especially on a wheel, is there can be some things in the clay that you don't anticipate, some type of resistance. So as your work, the more you work it, especially as you start making as you start making the walls of the vessel, when you come to that spot where there's going to offer up resistance, it can just basically cause the entire piece just to collapse. Um, that could be something like hidden piece of grit, or just something, just something messed up in the clay, just something in the clay itself. Um, I was thinking back to when we had Trisha, Trisha Frost here, when she was talking about how we have we have wounds and scars in our life that kind of hinder us um, with our can kind of with our walk with, with our walk with the Lord. Yeah. Those hidden those hidden things that we just need to basically bring out to the surface. But but as you're making the vessel, once you pull once you pull that out, I mean yeah, you can just take the clay. Smush it down again and just reform the vessel. So even if the clay does resist, again, as the potter, he has control over. It. He can smush it down, reform it. If it keeps resisting, he can just keep doing that as many times as he needs to. <laughs> so I'm just saying, <laughs> you can resist all you want, but he's got he's got you literally right where he wants you. So like, okay, okay, if that's how, okay. If that's how you're going to be. There we go. All right, let's try again. Oh, try again. Okay, now we go. Now we got something going on here. So. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> which, yeah, which brings me to this next point. I mean, you can uh, respond in two different ways. You can either argue, and in, in Isaiah 45, verse 9, it says, Woe to him who strives with him who formed, who formed him, a pot among earthen, uh, um, excuse me, a pot among earthen pots. Does the clay say to him who forms it, what are you making? Or your work has no handles. Basically arguing with God, say, Lord, I don't like the direction you're taking me in. What are what is this is something that I just don't want to do. Um, if I had to say in my life, I would say I probably never got past much this part. I was probably I just offered up a lot of resistance to the Lord. So I was basically just Lord had me, wanted that was forming me. It's like, okay, you're gonna be a vessel that's gonna be used for this. And I was like, nope, nope, don't want that, don't want that. So that was kind of, so that was just kind of my state, and I think that's the state of a lot of that's a lot of people. They, there could be a direction the Lord may want to send you in, but you may not like it, you may not want to go there. But it's like, no, I'm forming you for this purpose. You're going to submit, um, but hopefully, if your attitude will actually be one of submission. Um, Isaiah 64:8. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our Potter. We are all the work of your hand. And I would say that would have to be a really, that's probably one of the big issues that you would probably see in our culture today is just this whole issue of really of authority. I see, with my, I see, I see in adults, and I especially see it in the students I have, they don't, um, submission just seems to be almost like a dirty word. It's like to, if somebody is above you, trying to submit to them, it just doesn't, I mean, you, everybody just wants to be in charge. But it's like, no, there is, no. There are some, some of you do have to submit, some people do, have, you just have to submit. And you have the and the Lord. He's our ultimate authority. You really do need to submit. You have to submit to Him. 
<clears throat> but when you do, but if you, but again, after you have submitted and gotten past this part, there comes another, there comes another stage in the vessel. And I listened to a few, I listened to a few messages on this about the potter and the clay. Um, and a lot of them kind of stopped right about here. It's like the Lord um, puts you on his wheel and forms you, and it kind of just, and they just kind of left it there. But if Jeremiah was in the potter's house, and he's watching, well, not if, when Jeremiah was in the potter's house and watching him making these vessels, then Jeremiah would have saw a lot more steps being, being performed besides just the formation itself. Because another step in the pottery process is there is a dry, there is a drying period, a period where the vessel rests. Now, there are probably gonna be times, and I know this has happened to me, where you may the Lord may not you may may not be speaking, may not hear much from the Lord. It just seems like a lot a lot of things are just not going on. It just you just seem to be in this place where I don't know everything is just kind of just flat and not just not a lot of up and downs. It's kind of almost like a quiet. It's almost like a quiet. It's almost like a quiet time in your life. Almost a still, almost like a stillness, which is good because this is a time where you can spend <laughs> devote some time for study, prayer, um, and also just and also just wait, and also just waiting on the Lord, just waiting on the Lord Himself. So don't ever feel like you're forgotten. You're still in hit. You're still in the Potter's studio. He just has you on a shelf. He hasn't forgotten about you. He's going to come back. He's going to get back to you. He's just going to get back to you later. You just need to just. You just need to dry out and just rest for a little bit, okay? That's that's okay. And why and why you're up there resting again? Study, devotion time, which is a real, which for I know for I know in my life for me that was probably one of the big that was probably one of the biggest uh, biggest things that really helped me. It's when I started devoting more time to prayer, more time to study, that really begins really starts transforming your mind and your heart because during that drying process that is really starting to change it's really it's causing that internal change with the vessel itself because the next because the next step after that is that once once that vessel's ready um, it's time to put it to it's time to put it to the fire now <laughs> um, yeah the fire part uh, for a lot of people that's probably something that they don't really want to hear much about um, but if you read, but if you read in the scriptures, uh, in First Peter uh, one and First Peter, sorry, verse um, starting in chapter one, verse seven. So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes um, though it is tested by fire, may be found to, to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus <coughs> Jesus Christ. All clay vessels that are used for any purpose must go must go through the fire. I mean, that, if you're going to if you're going to make something out of clay and you tend to use it over and over again, it's going to have to be strong enough to withstand whatever you're going to put into it and pour out of it. And if you don't, and if it's not fired and strength if it doesn't go through a little bit of fire, it's never going it's never going to fulfill the purpose that it was designed for. Um, James uh, chapter one two verse uh, four, um, excuse me verse, chapter one verses two for four uh, count it all joy my brothers when you meet trials of various kinds for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let steadfastness have it, it have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing and with that verse right there it doesn't say if trials come but when they come the clay and again this is a time where the clay is going on a, on a dramatic change. Uh, if you want to get to the technical side of it, uh, clay goes through, the, especially the stuff that's put through really high heat. It's called a process called vitrification, where literally the crystalline structure of the clay is changing to where the particles fuse together to make it become not to make it become non-porous. So it's no longer so the vessel once it's going through this fire is no longer going to be the same when it comes out. It's going to be completely transformed. Um, so just the I mean just the trials in your the trials that go through your life when you're going when you're going through these, um, think back uh, to Daniel chapter three uh, with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were put in when they were put into the furnace. Um, that furnace, of course, was definitely just a big giant brick kiln um, used to fire brick uh, clay bricks and also some vessels. Um, when you of course when you you know the story. 
King Nebuchadnezzar looked inside of it and instead of seeing three people, how many did he see? He saw four, okay? This is where our potter is a lot different than a regular potter. A normal potter <laughs> stands outside the kiln, peeks in, and says, like, uh, I think they're okay. They, okay, they look good, okay. But our potter is in that fire with us, okay? He's in there with, he's in there with us making sure that we're going to be okay. Um, just a little funny side note. When I was re- I just when I read through uh, de- when I read through the story of Nebuchadnezzar and uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the story he um, Nebuchadnezzar is getting really he's real angry with him, and he sa- he commands that the um, that the fire be heated up seven times hotter than normal. Yeah. I looked it up. <laughs> Sorry, I looked it up, and um, for the type of clay that they had, the hottest that you can get the 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 highest temperature you can safely get it to without causing the vessel to warp is 2,050 degrees. So it's heated up seven times hotter. It was kept to like 14,350 degrees, which is hotter than the surface of the sun. So I don't really, <laughs> so I don't really think. I mean, that was you know just a type of an exaggeration, but I just thought I just got a kick out of that when I read that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I command you, heat it up hotter than the sun. Of course, when they tried, of course, a couple, what was it, two people died when they opened up the door, uh, opened up the door just by opening it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and also with the trials, I know sometimes we have uh, temptations that are going to be coming, that come to us. And what's really great um, is that even though if we are te- uh, tempted, we have a, we have a great promise uh, from the Lord in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has overtaken you. That is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you are able to endure it. So with all these different trials and even the temp- um, temptations, I mean, basically, you're going to, what's it going to produce in your life? Well, Scripture tells us in James 1, 2, um, 2 through 4, um, you're going to get, it's going to produce st- faith, steadfastness, and you'll have the full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So even when, so even if you're being put through the fire, just remember when you come out on the other side, the uh, the fruits that are going to be that are going to come that are going to come out of that, the patience that you're going to endure, and the fact and the fact that you will be not only you're just going to be a lot stronger person in the process. And of course, with us. Uh, with Christians, of course, the fire can also have a set can also have a second meaning. Um, of course, when the whole you know the, bat- uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, where it talks about John the Baptist came to baptize in water, but uh, he who comes before uh, he who comes is going to be baptized um, you the Holy Spirit and fire. So, if you want to take this illustration a little bit further, you could say the baptism of the Holy Spirit for a vessel would be the same would be the equivalent would be the equivalent of maybe putting a glaze over the vessel because I would have to I would, would you agree that a Christian who's spirit filled sta- is definitely stands out more than a Christian who's not spirit filled same as a vessel that is got a, a beautiful glaze on it stands out from a vessel that does not have a glaze on it okay so I just thought that was just a neat thought um, with that so don't so if the fire comes in your life you know one or the other <laughs> All right. Um, so, having said all that, as a vessel, uh, the Lord has designed you for a purpose, and that purpose is He's got work for you to do. Um, the Lord can use you in an incredible amount of ways. Um, he can use. Um, he demands that He demands that you be uh, that for your uh, the demands that you use your time, your money, your resources, because all, belo- all of that belongs to him. So as a vessel, we're not really supposed to just be sitting around doing nothing, really set, not sitting around doing nothing. Um, a vessel that is, a clay vessel that is supposed to be, it's supposed to be, it's, it's used for something. God has got, wants us to be used for something, for his purpose. And he could design you for several things. I mean, he could, we're called to be prophets, teachers, pastors, missionaries, intercessors, worshipers, 
apostles and especially servants. All of these require that you put your energy into it. The Lord fills, Lord will fill us, fills us up, and then we are to, then we are to pour out blessings to those that we encounter. And you can't really pour out a blessing if you're just sitting around. And this was something that the Lord was really pressing on me because I was, you know, talking uh, talking with some other Christian for, um, cr- Christian friends and then some other people who, you know, they claim they you know they have that name of you know they claim the name of Christ. But as far but as far as like the fruits that you see, the fruits in their life, there's really no present. It's more the more or less what you would call the cultural Christian. I claim I'm a Christian, but that's about it. I go to church. I just kind of sit around. I just kind of do my just kind of do my own thing. Um, if you look in James chapter two verses fourteen through seventeen and twenty six, um, makes it pretty clear. Where it says, uh, "What uh, what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them things needed for the body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. Now, just to make sure that we're clear, James is not saying that you're saved by your works, okay? Yeah. All, the, all the work of salvation, that was all done on the cross, okay? But what he is, but what he is saying is that the, wor- that the works that God uh, wants you to do is an expression of your faith and obedience to the Lord. Um, if we just go into um, and then Matthew 7, and I thought this was pretty interesting. In Matthew 7, uh, 7 and 8, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, it will be opened. Um, if you look at that carefully, where there's an action before, he, uh, before God responds, there's an action that he, that he says you perform. You need to ask, it will be given. Seek it. You'll find it, knock, and it'll be open to you. Kind of reminds me of somebody who says, oh, I'm looking. It's like, I need to find a job. It's like, okay. I'm going to pray to the Lord. It's like, Lord, give me a job. The Lord's like, okay. Go. There's a place over there. Go start applying. I mean, you're not, I mean, if you, if you're, basically, if you're, I mean, just as an illustration, I mean, if you're really serious about, if you're wanting to seek something, if you want to seek something from the Lord, you want to ask him or something, then it's like, okay. I need you to go do this, respond in, right. respond in faith, right. and I'll give it to you. Right. <clears throat> Amen. All right. Thank you. Okay. Now, um, well, believe it or not, I'm almost actually here to the end because I was told that I had to try to get through this kind of quickly, so... Huh? I know. <laughs> All right, but anyway, as I'm, okay, but I'm just going to keep. I'm just going to keep on going. All right, if you go, okay. Then in the case, would you uh, read? Uh, would you go to Second Corinthians four seven uh, seven through sixteen uh, seven through sixteen, please? All right, I'm going to read. Um, all right, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven uh, to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying the body, the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we... For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and, I, and so I spoke. We, are also, we also believe and we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus 
and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for the sake of so that as grace extends more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So that we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Even, so even, um, as, um, again, as a vessel for the Lord, he wants it, um, every day we need to come to him, have him renew our mind, Renew our, renew our hearts, and even when we feel like we've been poured, in, you know, we've literally been poured out all, all that we can stand. He'll continue to, he'll just continue to, fill, he'll just continue to fill, uh, continue to refill us whenever as much as much as we need. Um, and even during the times when we're going through and going back, when we're going through our, when we're going through trials, he's not going to give you more than you, he's not going to give you more than you can stand. If you be surprised, and I've, and if I can use you as an illustration, John, when you, um, when Dorothy, when Dorothy was here, and very, you know, with taking care of her, the responsibilities of the church, your family, the business, all, and of course, with you, and your brother, I mean, all the, I mean, all the things that just seem to be, I mean, just seem to be piling up on top of you, one after another. But yeah, and I'm sure some of you are things like, oh, Lord, it's like, is it, it's like, is it, is it enough's enough? When can I, I don't think I can do this. And the Lord's like, no, you can. I'm going to show you. You can do it. Yeah. The, remember, it's like, remember, I'm in the, remember, I'm in here, I'm here with you. You can do, you can do this. You can do this. I mean, you would be, I mean, it's amazing. It really is. It's absolutely amazing as a vessel that the Lord can use, the amount, the amount of it, I mean, I'm not trying to say that the Lord is going to, I'm not saying he's going to abuse you, but when the trials come, the amount that you can actually take, because he's there with you, he's there by your side, giving you that strength. And when you've poured everything out, he can just fill you back up again with his power and his strength, and you can just keep going. So, okay. And, amen. Well, um, that really is it. That really is all I had to say. Because, uh, yeah. <laughs>